Okay, so please introduce yourself. I'm Marilyn Haskell, and um, I'm a cantor at St. Paul's Chapel in New York, um, which is part of Trinity Wall Street. And um, we're here with uh, Music That Makes Community, which happens regularly in various places around the United States. And we um, offer for people who want to learn how to lead music in a congregation without the assistance of paper. We teach people how to stand up in front of the group, what to do with their hands, um, their eye contact. And that's, that's not the only thing we um, teach is that uh, I think the good part about music that makes community is you get to meet other people who have the same interests that you do in congregational singing and you make the connection with those people that you can maintain through Facebook or emails or or whatever great so um, um, you've taught at a number of music that make com makes community conferences uh, are there any particular uh, stories that Stand out in your mind for how coming to a music that makes community workshop made a difference for a person or a group of people? Yes, I, I think so. Uh, one of the things we ask people to do is to compose, learn to compose, and they actually write things while they're here and then perform them for each other. And I remember um, one woman at one conference came and <clears throat> she had uh, done this piece that was called Heal Me, um, I think it was called Heal Me Hands of Jesus, uh, or something like that, um, Heal Me Jesus. Anyway, she stood up in front of the group to teach it, and it was the most beautiful, simple, but well put together piece. And she wasn't, a, she wasn't what we would call a professional musician. And she sang it in this gentle voice um, that was, that was spectacular and it was a kind of humble offering that you you only come across a few times in your life and um, it was it was moving for everyone and so we were able to take that and then teach it in other places how many of the people uh, let's talk about the composing workshop because that's one of the uh, segments that you lead how many of the people would you say who come to a Music That Makes Community conference have ever composed before? What percentage would you say? Um, it depends on the conference because each one of them is a little different as to who, who comes. Uh, but I would guess that probably half of the people who come have, they may have written a desk cant for their choir or something like that, but other than that, they don't think of themselves as composers. And then there are probably, in every group of about 30 to 40 people, there are probably four or five who've never written anything in their life. Um, and so this is a, a new experience, and to see them then stand get excited about what they've done and stand up and, and teach it to the group, and then the group just mm -hmm breaks into wild applause because they're so pleased that this has occurred. So now we have kind of a mix of levels of people at Music That Makes Community in mm -hmm. terms of the participants. We have people who are untrained natural musicians and then we have people who have lots of training um, behind them. What, let's talk about those people who have lots of training mm -hmm. um, and you know lots of education and great credentials and everything. What does music that makes community have to offer someone like that? It's, it's a chance to, for people like that to reclaim why they got into this business to begin with. Um, at least that's what it did for me when I first got involved. Um, because we have a love of something that draws us to the church and it sure isn't money so it's got to be something else <laughs> and um, the point is that um, over the years because you have worked so hard to get where you are and spent so much time uh, perfecting those skills that you have been taught along the way in various different ways you begin to um, uh, rely on that more than you do the, the, the heart part of it that connects you to to the art 
and <clears throat> it becomes mostly technique uh, of doing things and I, people don't lose it entirely but when people come here one of the things they comment to us about is um, I needed to be there because the, of the the quality of the singing the the actual spiritual connection that I was able to make again uh, with colleagues with other musical colleagues and people who are working in the church get um, uh, we used to call it burnout but it's some kind of of melees that happens after years and years of being relied on to be the leader and when you come here you are in a learning mode which is different than than your day-to-day -day practice Great. All right. Thank you very much.